Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of Pop Culture Planet. I'm your host, Kristen Maldonado, and today we are speaking with Janine Mason. She is a Cuban-American actress starring in Roswell, New Mexico, and the upcoming Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square. I'm so excited for you guys to check out our conversation about Latino representation, keeping those positive vibes, and so much more. Enjoy! This Hispanic Heritage Month, we've been talking to Latinos on the rise, Latinos making waves in the entertainment industry. So I am so glad to have you joining us today, Janine, to share your insight. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me and for doing this. And I love that it's particularly people on the rise, because I know that like, I feel like we miss out on interviews for that chunk of people's career. And it's the most important part and the part that I think would be most beneficial to communicate to people who are on their journey that like important bridge section so I'm so, absolutely I'm so excited you're doing this thank you I'm, I'm so glad that you're here joining us obviously right now you are starring in Roswell New Mexico as Liz Ortego a daughter of immigrants who's a scientist who's um, telling a story that I feel like we don't always get to see necessarily in television you know a Latina and sci-fi um, but before we get into that I'd love to go back to your roots a little bit and just hear a little bit more about your relationship with your Latinx heritage. For sure, I'm from Miami, <laughs> Miami, Florida. So I would say it's a very present relationship. <laughs> um, I'm Cuban American, I'm first generation. My parents immigrated here um, as the revolution started. Um, I'm very proud of their foresight. My grandfather, my maternal grandfather in particular, he just knew knew uh, enough to not buy what was being sold um, and what eventually turned out to become amazing. And so um, I feel such pride in the people I come from and, and especially that wave, this Cuban American community that I grew up in and that fostered me. Anything is possible, truly. And success um, is, is attainable. And so much of it is in relation to how hard you work. And I do really believe that. I do think if you if you kick your butt constantly, and if you um, love what you do, if you if you're obsessed with it, if it is every part of your world, you know, there are ways in which um, you can get closer and closer to your goals um, just by willing it um, and believing. So that's from them. But I feel so grateful, especially the older I get, the more grateful I am that I'm from Miami and that I grew up in my caribbean community you know some of my best friends are jamaicans and haitians and you know god we grew up in the keys and and um uh oh my gosh i don't know it's just being so close to so much you know um just actually geographically um and having so much of south america it was it was so full and rich and then you know coming into hollywood i kind of felt like Where's everybody, you know? And the color has come back into my life and my existence and my career. Um, particularly in the last five years, you know, um, and a lot of that has had to do with finding that group, finding the connect my connection to my community within Hollywood. And it has existed, but we just weren't, we hadn't found each other yet. And um, now all these babes, all these incredible Latin women who, I so often didn't get to share the screen with because we were one on several projects. We now get together and foster each other's traditions and, and help each other reach that next goal, whether it's producing, directing. So my world in, in Hollywood feels a lot more like the Latin community that is my home. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. That's awesome that you were able to find that community you know, in Hollywood, how did you do that? You know, I think a big part of it was just the circumstances of the world we were living in and the bigger events that were happening. Um, Me Too and Time's Up, it just really encouraged a lot of Latinas who had some prominence and power um, and agency in Hollywood to say like, why don't we get together more often? And people like Gloria calderon Kellett and Eva Longoria and America Ferreira started opening up their homes and just hosting us. Um, and so I felt like I was just sort of stepping into Grey's Anatomy and, and I felt like this is the coolest thing ever. So I got lucky in the timing of it for sure off the top, but now I am just like the most obnoxious, um, you know, like uh, vocalist for like us continuing to find new and creative ways to engage with each other. And 
and now these are these people are my family and like Francia Raisa, her and I like I joke well, we Marco Polo all the time and I joke with her I'm like all right okay well that's enough taking over the world for today like talk to you tomorrow that's a beautiful thing to see because it's so easy to get caught up in like the idea that there's you know only a certain type of of person in Hollywood that can be successful and I feel like we're seeing more lately that like people want to hear other voices they want to see other people coming and telling their stories and to see that you guys are able to form a bond together and a community and help lift each other up is like, ah, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy you feel that way too, because my eyes have just been um, like blown wide open. The information and, and my foundation as an actor has been so enriched. I think a lot of what you're talking about too, even extends into understanding us not as a monolith, but as the, all of the separate you know, gorgeous cultures that inform our greater culture, right? And um, and the things that connect us. And so I play a Mexicana on Roswell in Mexico. You know, I'm a Cubana. So for me, it was so fun to tap into this like community of um, actors and activists and educators and, and say like, who wants to help me? <laughs> who wants to help me get my Mexicana down, you know? Mm -hmm. And make sure that I'm, um, I'm paying particular homage to things that um, are rooted in her Mexicanness, that I want to be in her bedroom, or I want to be, you know, throwaway lines. Like I know on set, everybody always laughs on, laughs at me because now everybody does it, but I, you know, stub my toe, I drop a line and I'm like, oh, con, 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 like every other, you know, flub. Yeah. And that's very Cuban. <laughs> that's very Cuban. Mm -hmm. But that's for Janine. That's not for Liz or Tech. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really, I, I'm a nerd for this stuff. So it's been so fun to be like, oh, okay, there's my Hondureña, there's my, you know, Mexicana. Like, here here we can all learn from each other and all get excited about each other's stories. And, and, and there, I mean, and my God, are there, are there, there are so many stories, um, Mexican culture and, and Mexican history that I had never been aware of or taught in school growing up in Florida, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. School's got a long way to go. That's great. You get to kind of learn about another culture and immerse yourself in another culture. Because you're right. We're not just one, you know, like Latinos are not just one thing. Sure. There's so many different kinds of, of cultures and, you know, history that kind of makes up all of us. So that's, that's awesome that you get to kind of learn more about that. Now, going off of that, I'm curious, do you remember the first time you saw like a Latino character or story on screen and how that impacted you? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, one came to mind, but let me see if I can think of what the actual first was. You know, I remember, um, oh gosh, I can't believe I can't remember her name right now. Uh, Lisa Vidal is her older sister, and she's on um, uh, United We Fall right now, which is a, co a network comedy. She's the lead, and she did Taina, right? It was like, oh, uh, Christina Vidal, yes. Christina Vidal. Taina. Canceled And I remember, like, <laughs> jamming, like, Taina, like, watching that intro and getting all sorts of pumped about it. I remember watching George Lopez's show. For whatever reason, I, I've i always loved sitcoms, and I, I absolutely want to do that, hopefully next, you know. And yeah. um, uh, so I remember, I do remember... Uh, George Lopez, his daughter was quite fair skinned. And I remember thinking like, oh, wow, they're acknowledging that like Latinas can look different. There's, there's not, there's just not one kind. I'm a very fair skinned Latina. And that was something that early on, I kind of was mistook, taken for uh, white quite often. So it was something that I had noise about. And it was, it was cool for me to see her. And the other one that came to mind was The Birdcage. You seen that movie? No. Hank Azaria plays this like butler character who's I like, I think is El Salvadorian. And he just made me laugh so hard. <laughs> so kind of all over. I think they did I think they did um pop out to me a little mm -hmm. more. And um and then I remember in in high school watching Gossip Girl. Mm -hmm. That was I didn't watch a lot of T V um week to week like you had to do back in the day growing up because I was a dancer and I had, a, I had, I was competing as an athlete. I was busy all the time, but my sister and my mom and I like made it a point to watch gossip girl every week. We loved the clothes. And, um, and it's pretty full circle now to be on a CW show. I'm like, okay, that's hilarious universe. But I remember seeing Jessica Shore. She played Vanessa on the show. And, um, and she was sort of this like ethnically ambiguous character. And I remember thinking, Oh, well, cool. Look, there's like 
a spot for me. Like, I could be that chick, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't think the, like, the the option of the Blair and Serena being Latinas, it didn't seem like a reality to me, even in high school. Mm -hmm. So to be leading a show, especially on the CW, and, like, to be following in, like, Gina Rodriguez and Jane the Virgin, um, we we were picked up the year that they they wrapped and so it was it really was um it felt like a real um ask that I was being asked to do well and right by the universe and I I feel immense responsibility and gratitude and it's just sort of just fired me up to just do better do better every season you know every day really now I'm curious um you mentioned that you were always competing and dancing do you remember like where your love of entertainment came from did you always grow up dancing and wanting to act for me, which I know not many people are like this, but it just sort of was there before I knew what it was. And um, there was never an option for me to not do this, in my mind at least, you know. I, um, I always, I loved it. I, I, I gravitated towards it. I was obnoxious. I was always putting on shows, you know. I, I <laughs> loved getting a laugh. I was a full ham and cheese sandwich and... But I also just was so drawn to it, and it was just a matter of fact. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> like, truly, I don't know, like, where that confianza came from. Like, I don't know what that was. But I um, I just, I, I'm grateful for it, because I think for a lot of my career, I've just had to ride on that when nothing else was there. <laughs> yeah, just that uh, that passion. You know, I, I always think, like, why would some higher power give you that passion or desire to do something if you couldn't do it, right? I agree. I agree, girl. I really do feel like some stuff is like set in you and in, and in planted in you, innate in you, um, for a reason that you know. It, it, maybe there's just no point in sitting and trying to understand why. Yeah, I'm just grateful I have such a clear directive in me, and I feel very free now, knowing that if I've made it this far, I, I I'm never gonna not be an actor. Will it, periods of more work than um than less and up and downs is there always been absolutely but through it all i will be doing this you know till the day i die i truly want to betty white this i always say <laughs> <laughs> so it's really freeing to just know like you no one's going to take this from you you know you get to do this as long as you want to do what it is you want to do and whatever you and as long as you're committed to doing what you have to do to take care of yourself and your family to sustain it. If it's something where maybe it's not, you know, answering everything that's given here, then, then you do what you have to do because you're getting to still do the thing you love and that, that brings you the joy. You know? Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. has there ever been times where maybe someone on the outside kind of came in and was like, you don't have what it takes or tried to make you feel like you couldn't do it? And if that's ever happened, how do you get past that? Yes, absolutely. And often and plenty, but I really have, um, that's another one of my superpowers is that I'm able to kind of identify that and just sort of like let it roll over me. Um, what I do try to do actively to take care of myself is like when something, when a gift comes, when something positive comes, when, you know, um, a sweet email or a text from a classmate who I like hugely admire, or have, you know, been watching for years and I'm like, you could it today. So, I take that and I keep it. And I sometimes will print them out or write it out or, you know, put them somewhere in my, in my life, in my field of vision so that I can be reminded in those hard days. So I have a real um, thing in me where, like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crazy optimist and, and I, I try to just um, focus, focus, focus on the positive. So um, I couldn't probably even give you many examples of those and I think that's the way that my my like you know athlete is taking care of my life it's like this is how we keep going I think that's great advice you know keeping the positive with you and letting that negative roll off you know you know yeah <laughs> it's just a sign that you're doing the thing you know I I love saying that to young actors where they get discouraged by bad news or or um not getting the gig or or finding out the pilot didn't get picked up and I'm like you just found out a pilot didn't get picked up like you're a badass you were just in a pilot for a network tv show like this is that is you have to give yourself a time of grief and of course some of them hurt more than others absolutely 
but it's all evidence that you are in the game, that you're a contender, that you're killing it, you know? Um, Absolutely. The person who doesn't stand a chance, they're not even hearing no, you know? They're not even trying. They're not even trying. They're not getting the call to say, hey, you know what? You impressed the shit out of me today, but we had, we're going another way. Like, there is, half of that, what I just said, is positive, is great, is great information to go, whoa, okay, hold on. What he's saying or what she's saying is that what I did today worked. So what do I, what can I remember? What can I go like, what was my mindset walking in? Like, what were the things that, um, you know, I did to like prep me this morning about this audition or this interview that I can now do with the next one? Speaking of auditions, do you remember what your first audition experience was like? My parents did not want me to <laughs> pursue this profession until I was 18, but I I begged them into letting me audition for one commercial that shot in Miami and happened to be um, uh, doing the auditions in their building that they work in, that their office is in, which is the only (laughs) reason I found out about it, because they posted about it in the elevators. Um, That audition, I remember very clearly, because I was so excited. I was like, here I go. It's my opportunity. Like, it's finally happening. They're letting me do this. And, And I fully went in there just being it was for a it was for a house of mouse commercial for latin american house of mouse so it was like all spanish and they wanted just like sort of like mickey mouse club kind of kids to just do this commercial (laughs) and uh they were like do you sing do you dance i was like watch me (laughs) i had never like I mean, I had never sang for anyone, like, properly. Like, I had done a lot of scenes and acting and, dan- like, dancing for my family, but had never, like, just sat there being like, huh? And I just went into that audition so full out. And um, I got the job. Wow. It was my first job. And then, you know, in my mind, I thought, like, my parents were going to be like, well, we can't deny it. Like, let's just let her audition more. And they were like, cool, you got that out of your system? Like, the next one will be at 18. fine fine and then my first auditions in LA which feel like my first sort of like adult actor here we go this is the thing um I don't remember them like the maybe the first few I, I sort of remember the overall feelings off the top which I was super enthusiastic and and then I remember like you know gosh I remember feeling like I would get somewhere close to something and then feel like I was at a door. Like I was at, the door was closed. And then it was like, oh, this is it. This is it right here. This is the area where I have to, where the resistance is. So I I have to keep pushing. So I remember that early on. I tried to take care of myself by really making small attainable goals. So this year I want to get, you know, three callbacks and maybe like my first co-star or something like truly that small and um those were huge goals you know at the time they were massive so um but yeah i have my fair share of awful audition stories of course every actor does it's like a badge of honor i'd love to talk through a couple of your your projects we got to start going all the way back to so you think you can dance um Mm -hmm. what was that experience like and and how do you feel like that kind of helped you jump off into your career I mean the experience was unbelievable because I truly did feel like I, I I watched that show religiously and so it felt like I was jumping into the tv screen like I remember seeing the sets and being like oh my god having like a honey I shrunk the kids sort of moment and um feeling like they're so you know, big, but then I'm like, the studio seems small, and like, you know, like, I was, I was amazed by how much there was, the camera, the lights, all that. The biggest takeaway for me of that job was that I had such a good time. I, I was in such joy and trying to just, like, do my best. I, I didn't have any, any strategy. There wasn't any, like, oh my god, I have to, I have to make it one more week, or I, I have to make it to the top 10 so I can go on tour. I I truly just felt like in, I was in such gratitude for it. I was just in, in amazement of getting to do that. I honestly think that's why I won. America's favorite dancer is... J. 
Janine. I think that translated. I think people loved that about me because I mean the saying with that show is like it's it's not always the best answer that wins. Absolutely not. It's 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 always it's always the one that you connect with. It's the one that you love. It was incredible. It, it was everything I could have hoped out of the first job, and then. It set me up in L.A. where I had no connections. I mean, we didn't even know, you know, we didn't know, like, a cousin of a cousin who knew someone's cousin out there. Like, we had nothing. <laughs> so, for me, it was like, okay, here's an opportunity to... Have, I got my manager. She saw the show, and I had a package on the show, which is those, like, intros that they show before you, um, you perform. And I said that I was an actor, and that, um, that you know, that that's really why I started dancing was because to me that's what an actor is an actor is able to do it all you know an actor is an MGM actor an actor is a theater actor a full instrument you know and um she's never picked up the phone off of a reality show and been like okay I'll rep you but she did and wow I think, I think that's sort of the kind of stuff that happens to you on your journey when you're just sort of like putting your authentic self out there, working your ass off. It's like, it's amazing how often, and those are other things to really um, dwell on and remember and like let enter your nervous system of like, this was a gift. This was in a lot of ways a crazy coincidence, but in a lot of ways not. In a lot of ways absolutely was what it was intended to be. Yeah, that's amazing. Just like, you know, everything's coming into place. Now, so would you say that after that, your first project on television or film was Big Time Rush? Oh my God, yes, girl. What, what, was, yes. what was that like as your first project, basically? My parents are business people. And so I love that about them because they, they help me sort of approach it. I think the trap for actors is to think it's this sort of like ethereal thing that'll like happen when it happens. And like you just like chill at a cafe until the agent walks in, you know? <laughs> and like that's utter bullshit. <laughs> like for that, don't move to LA, the rent is too much. Stay in your hometown and hope that someone walks into that cafe, you know? It's, you have to work very hard and there are measurable things you can do every day to get to a new, you know, and to get to advance yourself by the end of the week, let alone by the end of the month, you know? And so my parents really, really helped me with that. And um, I remember thinking, um, I was getting a lot, I was getting into the rooms a lot, invited by casting directors to audition for stuff. Because they were like, this chick is a badass dancer. She clearly works hard. And like, you know, it's, it says a lot about who you are as an artist to say, like, you have followed through and, and you, you committed and, um, and uh, you're hardworking, all that stuff. And so they were like, well, let's see how it translates into acting. And, and I remember Gerilyn Flood is her name. I, I love talking about her in interviews. And every time I do, because she listens to everything, and then she sends me a sweet Instagram message. And I just, I will... I adore her forever. I would adore her even if she hadn't given me my first real job. <laughs> but she just, she was one of those people who was familiar with me from, from the show. And, and the, the part on Big Time Rush was a guest star on Nickelodeon. And um, it was the top of the show guest star. It was a play on Buffy the Vampire Slayer because it was their Halloween episode. So I played Muffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and she did all these like really cool stunt tricks and jumps and like fan kicks and they had this like really fun tango little moment between her and one of the boys and I thought like I got I remember getting the audition and being like this is what I've been asking the universe for like give me something where I can get to the top of you know the these are the three we're considering you know after that initial those initial casting sessions you know like we're and that I can be separated because the thing I have to bring to it is my physicality, is the way that I know how to use how to use my body and that I'm trained. And it did exactly that. It really was insane to me how doing that job, it's it's gold. It was the thing that bridged it for me and it became my reel, my budding reel at the time. And, and then it was just sort of like, okay, what would be nice? Okay, so now let's try to get that guest star that has no dance involved in it. And it was my first guest star was CSI. And it was like emotional scene. It's like it's like perfect for the real and um it never ended up airing. I shot it and then it ended up, which is sometimes just things get lost on the cutting floor. But everything was very like what can I 
what can what little goals can I make next? And then the job after that that came that really was like I was the like, game changer for me was Bunheads on ABC. Yes. Family. Back when it was ABC Family. <laughs> and um I grew up just adoring Sutton Foster. I don't oh. Queen. 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 <laughs> Literally queen. Um, <laughs> Literal queen. And I just couldn't believe it really felt like one of those moments where I was like, I have manifested this <laughs> like posters on the wall, Sun Foster, you know? And it allowed me to like the dancer thing get got me the edge to like bridge me into getting that gig. And it was my first recurring I got to do, you know, the the second side of the uh, the B side of the season, they call it on ABC Family, with them and and learned so much. And and Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino who now show run Marvel's Mrs. Maisel, which is just the greatest thing on earth. The two of them, to have the two of them the showrunners so early in my career was just unbelievable how much I can't even believe it. Even now, like how lucky and how fortunate I was to have their set as an example, you know, before I went into that next period of my career, which is really like pilots and like pilots, 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 pilots. None of them went. But <laughs> it just sort of it, it it was like the best like education and schooling I could have ever asked for in this industry. I mean, Bunheads is definitely a show that I, I loved and I feel like that's where I kind of discovered you. Do you want to get back into doing uh, roles where you can dance and, and act? Or are you kind of like, I want to stick with like some more of like the, mm. like the, the serious acting roles for now? Or are you kind of open to whatever comes your way? Oh, girl, I'm all about like, give me give me everything and like give me the opposite of what I just did always <laughs> so like I have actually tomorrow which I'm sure this will air later and it'll already be up but the um the poster for a movie musical I shot last summer is being released tomorrow Ooh. by Netflix Christmas on the square on the yes square. girl I'm dying <laughs> I truly movie musicals oh I just adore them. Like I, it's everything my young self back in Miami, like theater and watching movie musicals. Like that was like that's being an actor, which is why my training I, I made it that way to support that. You know? Yeah, the acting, the singing, um, the dancing. Now, do you sing in this production? I do. I do, and it's my first time singing on camera. I've done you know, live shows, like theater productions and stuff where I've sang, but this is my first time singing on camera. And literally day one, we get to work and they're like, okay, we're going to be recording. And we shot in Atlanta last summer. And it was this incredible recording studio where like legends have recorded albums. And they're like, you know, it's all these like gold records on the walls. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh <laughs> my to my God. microphone, like, <clears throat> okay, can you hear me? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. That must have been incredible. I, we should get into that a little bit later so that we can like get into your new projects. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited for it. I was like, Dolly Parton? Yes, here for it. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about what it was like working on Grey's Anatomy? Oh God, I love that show. I mean, love that show. And it, it also felt like, I think when you're um, a nerdy actor like me, um, who like wants to try to like, get all your bases and like hit all the things that feel like mile markers in a career. And it's like the guest star on CSI, you know, or if like you're in New York, it's like guest starring on Law and Order SVU, you know? And for me, it was like, if I could be a part of Grey's Anatomy, which is like our generation's ER, you know, like the older actors, it was like, I guess start on the ER, you know, it's like for us, it's like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> it felt like it would just be the, the greatest gig in the world and that actually that job came to me here's a crazy story as an author because I had done a pilot one of the pilots that didn't go with Krista Vernoff who is the showrunner in Grey's Anatomy um the pilot that her and I did together it was unbelievable it was like um Eric McCormick Heather Graham Florence Pugh Timothy Granaderos um um uh, Sam Logan, myself, and um, Riley Smith, and and it was just like one of the best pilot experiences I had, and um, it didn't go, which is the way so many of them do. But it was sort of a singular one in that I've stayed connected and I work, and so many of us, I mean, all of us are still working so much and find each other on sets, and 
And um, Chris and I just hit it off. You know, she's also a Sweden dance fan, which is just crazy. And um, I think those things are like gifts you know, for people who are like, I, I saw you then, and I don't know, it just, it feels like it's, I don't know, we have to ask her, but it just, it, I just love it. I love, I, I, I love how much she knows me just from seeing, being there with me, you know? Mm-hmm. And I just, she just, I just feel like our artists are aligned in some sort of, you know, big way that I don't know how to articulate right now. And um, she set back in Grey's Anatomy. She wrote for the show back in the day and, and did a bunch of her own things and was invited back by Michelle. And she's saying the show is just screaming again under her guidance. And um, not that I've ever stopped for real, but it's flourishing right now. And she was like, would you want to come and do a bit for me on the show and I had done a pilot year that didn't go and um so I was out of the gig at the time and I'm like girl yeah if you need a dead body like I'll be here <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally text that back to her I was like wherever you need me and then what started as like three episodes turned into five episodes and then suddenly it was like you're pinned for 20 episodes it was it was the whole of the season and wow. um, it was a dream it was a dream and um I, I feel like it was my graduate school. I, I still, like, can't believe how fortunate I was in leaving that experience and, and learning so much and having such a positive experience and from then getting to leave my own show, which in itself is not something I ever thought I would do in my 20s, <laughs> you know, let alone my 50s. So it was just... It felt like a gift. It felt like we were talking about it earlier, where it was just like, you got to just trust that if, if, if you just put it, or you're putting yourself out there to attract the kind of people who are going to take care of you too, you know? Um, I loved it. It was so fun to be on like a show with such a big cast too. I mean, I think, I think can we could talk for hours just about that positive experience on that show and how much we feel all those people, but I mean, all of them are such champions for me still, and it just like makes my heart want to explode because I'm like, you don't need to <laughs> like <laughs> tweeting support for me, but you are anyway, and it's so sweet. Um, but yeah, Giacomo Giannotti, Jake Borelli, who is on the show right now and is my best friend. We met in acting class years ago when we were both just like hustling and, and doing Nickelodeon shows and as guest stars. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then we got to do Grey's Anatomy together. So it was just really um, incredible. That's awesome. And I think it just shows also how, like, just because you didn't get one thing doesn't mean that you don't have that connection still to those people. And maybe you'll get another opportunity. Or, you know, you mentioned you were with a friend that you'd known for a long time. That's really cool that you can, like, start building connections with people. And then you never know where that will take you. So oh, absolutely. I mean, the other thing, too, is, like, I, I always tell people, you have to find your people, no matter where you are, you know, because um, especially if you're staying in your hometown, you know, like you, or if you're in a place that it's like, you've made a decision of like, this is the kind of artist I want to be. You have to really make sure the people in your life um, support and nurture that artist. And if they don't, that's okay. But then find a group that does, that you can go, okay, now I'm going to go and I'm going to work on the script or I'm going to bounce these ideas or share this scene, this tape I just made with that group of people, with the people that I know are on my side and um, believe in me and are in in support of my ambition, you know. Um, And my favorite thing in this industry, and and I I love meeting actors and, and hearing from them, it's like they light up when they're talking about, oh, and then I got... And then my my buddy guest was on the show, and we used to do a scene together, and we knew each other from acting school back in the day, and like that's the best stuff because it's it's the people you that have like Jake has walked on this journey with me, like like Jake has been the call when I've been like it didn't go for the fifth time, it didn't go, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then when he up and moved to New York because he was like I think I need him some new juju up in this acting journey and got cast on Grey's and had to turn right around. <laughs> it was like, I got the call and I'm like, wait, what episodes are you pinned for on Grey's? And he's like, well, 102 and 106. I'm like, 
well, I, I'm him on what I said. So I'm like, it's slowly yeah. dawning on us. And it's like, holy shit, we're going to get to do this together. It's the best. That's stuff. awesome. Like, those people that keep like that are are legit and are and do right by you and you right by them like those are the people that will be with you the whole of your journey I, and I I love seeing that you know I'm 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 a decade into my journey and I like just like I can't wait to produce my first film and like bring bring friends in you know oh that's awesome oh we're gonna have to get into that shortly but let's get into um roswell new mexico this is a, a huge role like you mentioned this is your first leading a series yeah. role and i gotta say liz Orteco is a character near and dear to my heart i dressed up as her for halloween last year i don't know if you <laughs> i don't know if you remember but you shared my uh costume that i made um that was me um just because she's such an inspiring character and what you bring to this role is like incredible this past season that scene in the bathroom and she was crying, and I was I was crying. I was crying along with her. Oh, you know, I love you. But <laughs> and like you mentioned, you know, you watched Gossip Girl, and you were like, oh, I don't know if I'll ever see a character like you know an actress like me playing one of those roles. And like you're leading the show, and it's like incredible and so inspiring. And I was wondering what was it like, kind of auditioning for it and and getting the role, and what has it been like, um, you know, just hearing people's experiences, watching you, and being inspired. Thank you, my girl. That's like the best stuff ever. One of my good friends who I went to high school with, he has a little sister named Lindsay Bengochea. She loves theater and she has a YouTube channel. And she's gotten like, she just is like ballsy and will just reach out to people. And she's gotten some really impressive interviews. And Jose reached out and was like, would you, would you be willing to do Lindsay's YouTube channel? I was like, Oh, of course. Like, let's do it. And um, it was so, it was just so cool to hear Lizzie talk about being from Miami. And like, she was like, I still can't believe you lead the show. Like, she was so, you know, it was so much for her. And I just, it's just the best stuff ever. It's like, it, you know, this is, this is, um, this is hard work, you know, and, um, uh, and it's tedious work and, and you get into the, I get into the like book of it of like looking at my script and like reading the books and like, and I get, you know, sometimes it gets so micro that I, I love those moments where it like blows back like that and you go like, hold on, wait, this is, um, this is like big, this is cool and big and, and important for all of us. I mean, it's just like, it feels unbelievable still, you know, always, it always will. But, um, you know, it, this job really, I think that's another sort of tie-in to what we were talking about. Um, where this job lined up for me at the moment where I was also accessing and unlocking something for myself, you know? So it was like this character appeared who is everything I could have hoped for in the character. And, and I mean, and it was like, do I do the brave thing and go for her, you know? And so what what I mean is I was I was doing Green Anatomy and I was loving that job, but I was a recurring guest star on the show, so I was up to go into pilot season and, and I started auditioning. I, I had um, a test for the rookie the first week and, and I was like, Oh cool, the rookie, all right, well like, you know, this is exciting. First week of the pod season, um, it didn't end up working. One of the auditions in the week was by Friday. We got the pilot, three auditions, three three pilots that wanted to test me. Sorry, it was Thursday. They all wanted to test me Friday. Oh wow! And I was on set that day for Grays, and I couldn't believe it when I answered the call from my agent. He was like, "Okay, so we have three. And then I actually was about to do a scene with Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen Pompeo, and I, you know, she's Ellen Pompeo. Like, <laughs> it's always intimidating, even though it had been like well into my season there. I still was like, I mean, this is like, Jesus Christ, you know. And um, I was standing on my mark, like, and I was about to walk, and he calls me, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And he said, which one do you want the most? And it's in those moments that I, I love to, to tell people, like, we think it's all out of our hands, but we have choice always and um you have to you have to like 
you have to take those moments and really ask yourself with doing something that's brave and right and that is your wildest dreams you know um i feel like it's in my my dna it's in my like rhythm to be um a risk taker with that kind of stuff um some of my friends very much they'll be like you know what let's go for the one that i feel like she's fourth or fifth in the call sheet and for sure more solid chance of getting that pilot and that job but for me it was like both of them. it was like of these three it was a no-brainer that i would that i would be honored to get to play with wizard to go for a pilot let alone going into third season the third season so for me it was worth the risk i i I mean, I had, uh, who was I to be like, sure, go for the one where I'd leave the show. But also like, who was I to not, you know? And um, and my agent, like, he, it was really, he was like, so Roswell, right? Like, that's the one to go for. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that one, sure. You know, and then I hung up and I told him to just go and get me that job. And, and um, uh, like, I'm watching my face and I was just like, what well, is my life? Like, just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Then, by the time I got to my trailer that we finished the scene, I, I, I called my acting coach who's like, you know, my my collaborator and half my brain and someone that I like really um use as a sounding board for this kind of stuff. And I was like, I can't I, I told him to go for Roswell. Like there's just I don't I don't know. Like maybe I should just not try to pin them against each other and see if we can come out with a gig. Like I will happily go in there and like audition for all of them, like, like, test for all of them and go through all of the steps, you know. But he was like, absolutely not. Like, you need to understand, like, this is where you're at. And this is, this is the value you bring to the production. And um, I knew it was true. I knew it was true. Like, hearing him, you, you know when someone says something to you and it's true. And then you know when it's like your body's not entirely there yet or ready to believe it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I just, I know enough now Um you know, at 29, but I'm like, when the people I trust who, who have, who have, you know, proven themselves time and time again to me, say something to me and I, and it's, and Miss Swana, like truth, <laughs> then I need to say, I'm going to, I need to go with you because I know, you know, what's best for me. And I know you're just pushing me to claim the thing that's just beyond me. And so it feels a little scary. You yeah. Know? It wow. was, it was a crazy 24 hours, man. But it landed in this job and and then the other gift in leaving Grays is that they just they wrote me out so beautifully and I had this gorgeous storyline, you know, where my character was a DACA recipient and and the episode's called Beautiful Dreamer. And it just like that title alone, it just felt like such a gift. Like they were all just so excited for me and that I was ready to go and do this thing. And I mean recently I was doing a live with Giacomo Genotti who plays the wonderful Dr. DeLuca on the show and, and he was doing a poetry series, you know, during quarantine and and he was like it was so funny we were chatting and he's like, I just I can't believe it's season three already, you know, about my show. And it's like it is, it's all of our journey. Like they're they're like, there she goes. We're so proud. You know? Yeah. Like you graduated medical school and now you're a full on scientist. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I think that's really powerful what you were saying. It's so easy to kind of get caught up in like, well, can I do it? Like, should I go for the? And it's like, of course, you should go for your dreams and you should go for that big role and not, mm -hmm. you know, um, feel like, well, maybe I should go for the safe bet. Like, that's so exciting to, to have people around you. And I think it goes back to what you were saying about having such a great support system of these people around you being like, yes, of course you can do it. Of course you should. Versus mm -hmm. having a group of people around you that are like, yeah, maybe you can't. You know, maybe you should go for the totally. safe bet. Like, that's so awesome to have those people that can be like, you're right. Like, you should go for this. You can do it. And here you are about to go into season three. Oh, thank you. I, I'm 100% with you. I think those are people to cut out of your inner circle, at least when it comes to who I'm going to call. You know, like, <laughs> those people can linger in your life for sure. Whatever. It's up to you. We can talk about it another time. <laughs> but like, I know. Okay. You're not the person then I'm going to call when I just got a crazy call from my agent, Sean. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If Sean calls, then I'm going to call this these three people. And it's really, you know, you have to you have to be specific. You got to take care of yourself like that. And, um, yeah, girl, it's just crazy. Some people, it by no fault of their own sometimes even, they just don't have the capacity 
to uh, exist in that energy and to live in a live in a rhythm in your life of anything is possible any, any day. You know, my dad has always said that to me, and it was something that again I love writing things everywhere. And it was something I I had on a piece of paper from the mirror for a long time, the whole time I've been in LA. I should probably put that up here. But you know, he said to me, he's like, baby, you know what's amazing about your life is that any day your life can change for it. And and I really do feel like, I think he meant it in relation to acting and to being an artist, you know. But I do think that if you live your life in an energy, if you, if you, um, if you, are, if you are brave and if you are bold and you make bold steps towards your goals, I think that anybody's life can be changed any day, regardless of what the career is, you know. Um, and... I would rather be like, that was the wrong step, but you know what? Another opportunity will come. I would rather that than be sitting at the push job thinking, like, oh, damn, that chick got Lizard Techo. Like, I could have done Lizard Techo, you know? <laughs> that would have killed me. There was yeah. no option. So for me, it's not an option. But I do have some friends who they play a little safe. So I always tell them, I'm like, you call me. Like, you put me in that in that group of people you call, you know, after the work call comes in. Mm-hmm. Because I'm happy to tell you, you know, why be anything but brave? Like, what is there to lose, truly, you know? Absolutely. Go big yeah. or go home. <laughs> go home. <laughs> oh. I love, I, I remember sharing your post for <laughs> Halloween last year. That made me so happy. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, I you, you're inspiring. Your character's inspiring. So I was like, I got to make my costume and, you know. <laughs> oh my god, truly everyone on set lost their minds too. It was oh, the- uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, it made me so happy. So thank you. But you know, I really think that there is a power to um, be able to see people like you on screen. So like, you know, as a Latina to see a Latina scientist, like I'm like, yeah. that is inspiring. That you know, now I can dress up as Lizard Tego for Halloween. It is powerful to be able to see people of, of, of your background or similar background in successful positions. You know, it's it's a powerful thing to see. And so Absolutely. You know, like that is in, in, in where this conversation started, where we talked about what was the environment you grew up in. And like my environment in Florida that I grew up in was predominantly, you know, Latinx and it was wildly successful. You know, my, my friends, parents are doctors and attorneys and, you know, engineers. It's, I mean, everything. A rainbow of opportunity, of job opportunities. Uh, is and are inhabited by Latinx, you know, people um, in the community I grew up in. So it just sort of feels like TV is catching up to that. And um, we've just had, the reason for that has been because we've just had such little screen time dedicated to people of color, for sure. And um, Latin folks, absolutely. When it's this much versus the full rainbow, you know, it, it's, um, we, we, we've, we fall into such small allowance of what we can be. And so it's really going like, hold on, wait, we're not, what we're doing is not a new thing for a Latin woman, you know? We're, hello, Sonia Sotomayor, we're the Supreme Court, girl. Like, we are everywhere. It's just that now we're trying to catch up in the storytelling realm to mm-hmm. um, broadcast that out. Um, and when I think about Sonia Sotomayor, for example, like, she's someone I've always been like, familiar with her face, but I hadn't really, familiarize myself with her story until recently. Her book is incredible, My Beloved World, if anybody's out there and needs a new book read, 100% recommend. And when I think about her and um, what she's accomplished, it's unbelievable. But I should have known about her as like a Cubanita in Miami, you know, growing up. I should have I should have been familiar with her. And when I think about, you know, my privilege and my educate that my education provided me, that I had access to, the books I had, the teachers I had, you know, the the people my parents brought into our home, their friends, how educated they were, you know, if I didn't have enough of an understanding of someone then, who, like, what hope is there for someone who did not, you know, so we have to really make it a priority to, um, to get what is already reality across, you know, what it, we're already there in so many Absolutely. ways. We're just trying to broadcast it and get it into the right houses so that the right little girls and little boys go oh wait oh my god hold on like this is how many governors are you know what i mean um Mm -hmm. latinos or latinas like it's 
Um, it's about broadcasting it. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of, you mentioned books. I know that um, you do a Liz Orteco Reads book club, and I was wondering if you could share if there's any good books. Um, I know you're specifically featuring some um, Latinx authors recently. If there was any good ones you could share with us. Oh my God. Okay, so right now I'm reading The Last Train to Key West by Chanel Cleeton. It is so good. All her books are incredible. She did When We Left Cuba, which is like a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. And um, it all happens in that part of the world that I'm from and that my family's from. So it's just, but, but they're historical fiction as well. So it's so fun to read about like the expansion, Key West, you know, and like Flagler and the railroads, you know, and um, so much of like the area I grew up in and, and don't know the history of. So I, I've loved that. Dominicana by Angie Cruz is a New York story. She wrote this book for her mom to honor her mom's story of coming from DR to New York back in the 60s. And it is unbelievable, like, like run to go get this book. It is okay. so gorgeous and it's such an easy read and it, it, it just blew my mind. It like reinvigorated my love of our fortitude as women. It's incredible what we can do and what we can accomplish um, to take care of our family and ourselves. And um, this, this young woman's journey, you know, the, the character that Angie Cruz's mom is based on, like her, her journey where she starts this and where she ends this, she is so on her own two feet by the end of this book. And it is stunning yeah awesome definitely have to check those out yeah. um especially as a dominican from new york girl you would yes. love this book right, right <laughs> oh, she's amazing so we already talked a little bit about christmas on the square but can you tell us a little bit more about that film and what it was like working on like a dolly parton inspired christmas film i mean that sounds like a very dolly perfect christmas oh my god uh, let me tell you i i love christmas like i it's my my jam. I listen to Christmas music like in April if I need to. You know what I mean. And um, it, it it was it's one of my career goals <laughs> to do a Christmas movie. And I told my family, you know, I, I like I can't retire until this happens. Like I told my team, my manager, they're all aware. So when this came up, I yeah, I straight lost it. I was just so excited. <laughs> Gosh, so many things, but I guess where I'll start is Christine Baranski is the lead of this movie. The fun connection is that her daughter, Lily Coles, plays Isabel on Roswell, so... Oh, wow! Oh, that's yes. awesome! Yes. It's so fun, yes. Lily is Christine's daughter, and her youngest, and um, so I had always told Lily about how much I have just grown up adoring Christine Baranski. She is everything I want to be as an actor. Um, I love how wide and varied her repertoire is, like the work she's put out into the world is. I love that she is like a New York woman. She's a woman of the theater and um, she's so respected, but then she just you know, also lose her shit and have a good time and that mom's Christmas or, you know, the birdcage even, like she, her dancing and that. It's such a small moment, but it's just so cool. I, I love her, I love her artist um she's just there's no place you can't imagine her you know you're like a movie musical mama mia hit me with christine bransky sure chicago all of it you know her show she's this badass attorney you know on the good fight and she just is unbelievable it's one of the best shows on tv and every year it gets all the love you know so to to get to learn from her and meet her and and look into her eyes and say acting words was just absolutely incredible. Um, and then Dolly Parton is, I mean, it's just unbelievable. She is truly, I mean, she's an icon, you know, um, and she's absolutely an American treasure. And she, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, mentioned earlier, I mean, he loved her. And I didn't know that actually until my mom came to Atlanta and visited me while I was working on this. And she's, she was just in awe by it as well. And she shared with me how much um, he adored her, how she represented to him everything that was good and great about this country. You know, my grandfather left Cuba and um, there's a lot of sentiment and a lot of that first exile wave of like 
next year and then you know we'll we'll get back eventually to our country. But my father was he's the opposite. He was so excited to be here. He was so American. He loved that he was American so much. And and she was all that. She was everything. And uh, it just I lost it. I just couldn't believe I didn't him and I never got to talk about it. It feels like it was just orchestrated by him <laughs> because it's just, it's just delightful. It's, it's, it's a family holiday Christmas musical. And um, it's, yeah, it's on Netflix November 22nd and it premieres. And um, I can't wait to share it. It's just, it's something so different from, you know, I love my Liz, but, she, but she's intense and she's a lot and she's in her head. And um, uh, she's, her mind is so big, it, it's sometimes heavy. And, and, Felicity, who I play in Christmas in the Spirit, it's like, she's like a, a cartoon character. She is so light, she literally flips. She is a golden hippies, and she's just, she's lovely. She's truly just lovely. <laughs> so it feels like such a fun, it feels like such a fun balance. I can't wait for people to see this and be like, what? <laughs> um, but it's really what I always want for my career. It's just that like really funny balance of things like that. Yeah, uh, I can't wait because I feel like Netflix has like this holiday cinematic universe, but also a little bit of like a Dolly cinematic universe going on. And so it's kind of like merging both and um, I can't wait for it. And I can't oh. wait to see your, your singing debut on uh, on camera. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, I'm curious because uh, you've mentioned uh, a little bit about like a checklist of like certain things you want to do in your career, having like yeah. a, a Christmas movie or CSI, yeah. SVP type of thing. So um, do you have like a, a checklist of like just goals or things that you want to do in the entertainment world that you're just like, I, I want to make sure I get this done? Because I think that is really cool kind of to be able to sort of create like a vision board in a way of like your goals of what you want to do. And it kind of mm -hmm. seems like you have that a little bit. Absolutely. I love, I love having goals, you know, and um, it's fun to just like speak them to people too, you know, because then you never know. They just sort of pop up and then you're like, ha -ha, I asked for you, you know. Yeah. Um, Putting it on to the universe. Exactly, girl. I, I absolutely think that's true. I definitely would love to do a sitcom. I, I, one of the pilots I did was a sitcom um, and it was such a fun two weeks working on that and getting to do those live show days. Um, it sort of brings together a lot of the things I love about live theater and um, uh, TV, but it's also just, I love being silly, you know? And um, uh, I just think it would be so fun to be in the rhythm of joy with work for a while and to get to do a series where um, you get just get to play like that. I, I really, I'm willing, I'm willing to say comment in my life at some point. Yeah. Um, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'd love to do more movie musicals. I just love them so much. I mean, I really, I want to be Christine Bransky. Um, so definitely more of that. Um, and then I, I want to do stuff where I get to be physical, you know, um, like a Gal Gadot moment. Like, you Ooh. know, let's... I love how she is just like, she's so perfect for that role and her background. It's like she didn't know, or maybe she did, but she's been preparing for one of the women for her whole life, you know, with the training and that stuff. So I'm probably training and preparing for whatever mine is that's coming, but something at some point that I can suggest this and we get to use like all of my instrument has afforded me of being able and muscular and healthy so I hope I can do something you know in the next like decade of my career that just feels like holy shit I did that you know yeah <laughs> also my dad will just live for it it'll be hilarious <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that that is so cool like being able to kind of take on all of these different types of things I think that's really interesting because it gets you to you were able to sort of like put yourself into all of these different positions that like as an everyday person you wouldn't get to do as an actor it's like oh now you could be a superhero or you could be a nurse or you could be literally anything um and mm -hmm. I feel like that's like the appeal at least in my eyes of, of being an actor is you get to yeah. live all these lives in a way you know these little snippets of lives which is so exciting oh absolutely that's the best thing about it it's like that that's what I always love telling people, it's like, what do I want to do next? It's like what I haven't done, you know, always what I haven't done. Um, 
um, that's the, the beauty of this gig is the, the changing it up. You also mentioned, um, you know, that if you got the chance and you could produce something and bring your friends in, mm -hmm. do you want to uh, kind of get to that other side, like producing or directing or writing or anything like that? Absolutely. Definitely producing. I, I have the producer brain. <laughs> I love collaborating. That is my favorite thing about this job. I think it's the reason I found acting or my 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 soul just knew I needed to do it. Because I don't like being a soloist. I can't imagine having that that having been my my sport growing up or hobbies. Like everything that I love about acting is that it's a meeting of minds and and it's like that teamwork that, that we all get to like make a beautiful thing out of together with all of our best ideas, you know? So for me, it's, I get really excited about this like list of people I have that I've seen on sets and whatever department they might be in and that I've just watched them all and I just like to keep them in my pocket. And I'm excited about bringing them all together like Avengers and <laughs> working with them. So that's where I get moving into an area where I could be a part of um, bringing together really special environments that I think would just would just for beautiful work. Um, uh, I also would love to get more into to, um, theater. I, I, directing in theater excites me for sure. It's just it's the, the medium, medium just excites me. I love thinking about bodies in relation on that space. Mm -hmm. um, not quite there yet with the camera, I'm, I'm learning, but it's more, it's more fun for me to go back to my theater roots and think about, you know, how I would choreograph and how I would stage. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. I'm actively doing that now. I'm, uh, it's part of the reason why I love reading and sharing things that I've read because um, I, I just am constantly searching for something that makes sense to, um, to like, you know, take it on the road and like get it made and, staff it up so oh i mean that's awesome to, to yeah. be able to like take a book adapt it into some you know something that you're already passionate about adapt it bring all these people together awesome that's what i'm working on that's what i'm working <laughs> on so to be, to, to be announced we'll see we talked a lot about um you know the importance of of being able to see yourself on screen the importance of kind of keeping supportive people around you um, and kind of keeping that positive mindset and keeping those goals forward. So I was wondering, how do you feel uh, that we as people can support, um, you know, underrepresented groups in Hollywood, whether it's Latinos or, or beyond um, in order to help projects um, and just support um, and get more representation out there? I mean, the main thing, which like you'd think is, goes without saying, but it's really like committing to showing up. Like, committing to buying a ticket and buying a ticket opening weekend, you know? <laughs> committing to um, watching the show. Like, like, DVR it and watch it within three days or seven days because that's in the ratings come in and that tells the studio I'm interested and engaged and, I, and I'm following through on this season, you know? So, I, I, I wish that... I wish that I that didn't have to be like explicitly said, but it really does. We need we need people to show up. Um, I I love buying tickets for stuff even if I can't show. <laughs> I have friends who have films come out, and I I will if I can't make it if I'm shooting that weekend, I will buy a ticket to like a local theater. Um, it's what we got to do. It's what we gotta do. And then the other thing is to like remember, no matter where you are in your journey, your voice. Uh, is a huge contribution to getting things moving in that direction. So for me, that was a huge thing with this job, with Lizzo Tinko and Roswell Mexico and leading a show. I realized I had to get past the feeling something needs to be out and feeling like, um, do I say it even though like it's uncomfortable? And for me, it, it has to do with a lot of stuff where it's like, you know, I, I like people being happy with me, you know, and I have this bit of people pleaser in me. And I'm proud to announce that she's slowly dying. Not not entirely. I don't want her to go me like entirely, but for work, she has to be able to look at it and and understand her. As long as it's connected to my barometer, which I feel like is the most important thing, um, of like, is this in the best interest of production? 
and is this in the best interest of um, my people, um, then I'm happy to share the information. Often times I share it, and I know for a while that that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be listened to or put into plan, um, but it's important to just say it because at the very least I'm exercising that for myself. I'm getting myself more accustomed to it and becoming a, a smarter and stronger advocate for myself and for communities. Um, but it's also a reminder for the other person in the room who hears it, whichever person it is, the woman who's like, oh, shit, she went ahead and said that and said, you know, we could do a better job here. And that's huge for her. And I've been at it this moment. Who's seen her really step into um, her value and her voice and go, that's the kind of actor I want to be and the kind of activist and ally I want to be. So I'm trying to do that as much as I can and get as comfy with it as possible. Um, and I think it's especially important to identify things that, that your voice um, is important to because it's a, it's a privilege that is yours in the case. You know, I'm a, I'm a light-skinned Latin woman. I, I have a lot of inherent privilege in a world that just is easier for people who are lighter. Um, and so, particularly in Hollywood, because of our standards, right? So, when I go out to advocate, I try to advocate for you know, uh, writers and actors and storylines on our show because I know from the community work that I do and these gatherings that we do, that this is where we're struggling right now. We really need to put some attention on what it's not. So then I go, great, that I know I can be able to have it before. And I have an amazing team on Oswald who has already put that into action, which is awesome. I think it's a brave thing to be able to stand up and be like, this is what we need to do, or these are things that would be better for this project. Um, and it's it's great to see like you championing for that, getting writers and um, hairdressers or, or, you know, like lighting people of color in the room can, can change a project so drastically. Bring it on, uh, when that movie came out, Gabrielle Union actually told the, the writers, like, I don't think that I should say a line like this because it's a stereotype of how a black woman is portrayed. Like, I don't think that this works. I don't, you know, and she kind of gave a little bit of insight into her own experience and they were able to switch things up and, and take her experience to heart. You were able to change this film so much just by listening to your actor's point of view of like what her experience is like and, you know, just make it more realistic and, and make it a more powerful story. And that's a great example, you know, I mean, there, there, are, there have been so many anomalies and unfortunately that's what they are in our film history. You know, we think about like when Bridesmaids came out and it was like, well, this will be the end of calling it like female comedy movies and, and um, Unfortunately, like there's still so much that that we're up against, you know. Um, but that's a testament to a fucking smart woman who done her research, checked in with her activism and her community, and and armored herself with this is what does and service us, and this is what does, and um, and just like floating that over to the people who make the decisions at the very least. Um, after it's been floated enough, they can take it. So, <laughs> absolutely, you know, and and hopefully you're the third and the one that then it means the change is made on your set, you know, or in your work environment. This has been such an awesome conversation. Love your vibes, of positivity, and you know, just letting the world bring us what we do, what we deserve, what we work hard for. Um, I think that's really powerful. Thank you. This was so. I am so happy to meet you in person. And your vibes <laughs> came across even on Instagram a year ago. So oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Do you want to share where people can find you? Yes, please. Um, you can follow me on social media at it's Janine Mason. So it's I T S Janine Mason. Um, and yeah, you can check out Christmas on the Square very soon on Netflix. And congrats yeah. on this. This is awesome. Thank you. As I'm sure you've experienced in a, in a space within entertainment where it's, you know, not a lot of diversity. I really wanted to create a space where, you know, we could bring more people together, especially women, especially women of color. You're doing us so right, you know, by just like being your brilliant self through that. Because um, then they go like, why didn't we think to do this earlier? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's my hope. That's my hope. Absolutely. Um, 
Well, but, thank um, you for having me. Thank you so much to Janine Mason for joining me on this episode of Pop Culture Planet. It was such a joy to feed off of her positive energy. You can catch Pop Culture Planet every week on youtube.com slash kmaldo, as well as all podcast listening platforms. Thanks for listening. It's been a blast, and I'll talk to you next week. You can also check out more Pop Culture Planet right over here. See ya.